her ebony hair glistened like the midnight sky. Surrounded by a vibrant aquatic kingdom, a majestic mermaid, adorned with iridescent scales and a crown of coral, emerged as the source of the enchanting melody. Nala, the mermaid's voice echoed, I am Queen Maliaka, the guardian of the waters. Your presence here was fated by the depths of your greed. Yet, the currents of destiny are vast and complex. You shall remain here under the water, and with your tears, pain, and grief, I'll make myself a necklace. Nala shook in fear and panicked, imagining the stress and pain her mum would be going through and the isolation she would face inside the river prison. Months passed, and Nala moaned in regret, unable to leave her cage. One dreary night, the mermaids and mermen gathered for their evening chats. She decided to try and flirt her way with the merman guarding her cage. So, it's all scales, she said. Excuse me, replied the merman. So it's all scales down there, said Nala. The merman looked at her with a blank face with no hint of emotion. He then turned around, giving her no response. She kept on talking for hours, but the merman gave her no response. It's not my fault I couldn't imagine myself being that average, unnoticed girl anymore, said Nala. The merman turned around and swam slowly to Nala. Beauty is from within, and the aura of false appeal ends one in a cage, just like you, he said. Nala stared, speechless. She crawled back to the corner of her cage and wept. Weeks went by, and Nala remained silent. The frog and the fishes came to cheer her up, but she remained mute. One morning, as she opened her eyes, she saw the same guard standing and watching right over her. She got up in shock. What are you doing? said Nala. The merman stared with a stoic gaze. Follow me, I want you to see something, he said. He wore a necklace around her neck. This would make you breathe underwater. And he carried her, picking her gently up like she was a toddler. He entered into the waters, and his legs became fish-like again. Somehow she could breathe underwater, and she clung tight to him. His fins moved with incredible strength, and they were fast into the waters, moving with an eagle-like speed. She stared at his face, but he was focused on where he was going. Soon they arrived at a place with vibrant yellow corals and underwater flowers. The sun was reflecting on the surface of the waters, and everything looked magical. She gasped with excitement. It's beautiful, she said, letting out a large smile as she swam towards the flowers and to the fishes frolicking in them. The merman stood and watched her letting a smile that could barely be seen. I don't even know your name, Nala said. He paused for a minute and looked at her. Ninzam, he replied. Nala smiled and said, thank you, Nizam. It's Ninzam, he said as he chuckled. I think we have to get back now before they discover you're missing. Nala was surprised that Ninzam just brought her out by himself. It wasn't an order, he was risking being punished for her. Ninzam took her back to the prison, and Nala, who was once a silent prisoner, became the jovial one. She started speaking again, and Ninzam, firstly reluctant, started enjoying the conversation. They both talked about their different lives and their dreams. Weeks turned into months, and Ninzam had taken Nala to almost every picturesque part of the sea. This weird relationship was becoming a love story. They started swimming around like couples sneaking around like teenagers, and somehow they were unnoticed. One day, Ninzam and Nala were engrossed in their conversation. Then Maliaka suddenly showed up. I think my intended cage to give you pain is now more like your cave of romance, said Maliaka. They both quickly went to their different positions. Maliaka nodes and simply swam away. What is she going to do? Nala said. I don't know, but I think we have to be careful now. The evening of the next day. Ninzam swam swiftly to Nala, his face unsettled. We have to go now, he said. They are planning to send you to the humming depths. 
anyone who goes there never comes out. He quickly carried Nela and swam with great speed towards the shore. As they arrived at the riverbank, he placed her on the shore and touched her face gently. You're free now, the Nela with no necklace beats the one with one. Nala persuaded him to come with her, but he said he couldn't. I have to go back and take responsibility. A hand suddenly pulled his fins from the waters. He quickly pushed Nala far backwards. Then three merman soldiers arose from the waters and carried Ninzam away. Nala screamed, No, please, don't hurt him, please! And in a matter of seconds, they were gone. As Nala screamed on the shore, some villagers heard her and ran to the river. Nala is back! They shouted, but Nala wept in pain. Nala met her mum and explained everything to her. But her mum and the villagers thought she went crazy and was only making things up. Her mother decided to take Nala away from the village to avoid her going back to the river. Months passed, and soon Nala discovered she was pregnant. Confused yet intrigued, Nala decided to return to the river. When nightfall came, she snuck out of the house running miles away from the village. Wandering through dark paths, finally, she got to her previous village. Nala headed straight for the river. When she arrived at the riverbank, she screamed names but got no response. Ningzam, Maliaka, Ninzam, but still got no response of any sort. She decided to jump into the river as she wore the necklace Ninzam gave her so she could breathe underwater. She wandered for hours and hours at the surface of the river, unable to find anyone. Nala cried in the water, screaming names. Suddenly, she saw a figure coming at great speed from under the water. It became more clear as it approached her. It was a merman, but it wasn't Ninzam. The merman grabbed her arm and pulled her into the depths, on getting to the merpeople's kingdom. Maliaka and her council stared with an angry but fascinated eye. You brought yourself back, Maliaka said. I need to see Ninzam, where is he? I am pregnant for him, Nala said. The mermaid stood in shock. We have sent him to the humming depths for disobeying his queen and he shall never be seen. Nala screamed again in pain. No, please take me to the humming depths. I have to find Ninzam, please. 